I was having a chat recently about tactile controllers and there was something I'd never thought about because I've always used tablets since I, I started this whole thing back up again, you know, apart from the Hornby things when I was a kid. And I'd never really given it much thought. I'd seen some of them in videos, but I'd, I'd never actually used one. So just out of curiosity, I thought I would have a go at getting a tactile controller working with a, an ESP32 and JMRI. And in order to achieve physical control of a train through GMRI and, and, and an ESP32, what I need, of course, are some physical controllers. Um, these are the ones I've, I've plumped for. I think that their, their model name is something like KY-O4O. I'll put a link in the description. I got this box of eight from Amazon for £11. And they're, they're just um, little... Uh, knobs that, that that turn in either direction. They've got little clicks on them, little steps as they turn around, which is good for tactile control. Um, they have a button uh, when you when you press on them, um, and they are three hundred and sixty degrees. They never stop. They 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 don't have a um, a stop point. You can just keep turning them for as long as you like. They are digital. They send digital signals to the to the ESP. They've got five pins. I'm just going to drop my camera, so I'm going to steady myself. They've got these five pins, ground and voltage, obviously. One for the, the button press, and then another two digital pins that are based on kind of rotors inside this that um, just take a couple of lines of code in the ESP32 script to determine whether the, the, the dial is being turned and the direction it's being turned in as well. And they come with, they go through a um, like a thin piece of ply, like those old SPDT switches I used to use for points on my last uh, on my last layout. Um, they just go through, drill a hole in a in a thin piece of wood, shove them through, and then they've got those um, little nuts and and bolt things to to fasten them in. And last of all, they come with these little caps that give you a, a smartish little dial on the top. Amongst its myriad of remote access servers, JMRI has this uh, Wii Throttle server, which is really specifically designed for remote control of locos that are in the JMRI roster from remote devices. And with the ESP32 having lots of spare pins and Wi-Fi on board, I thought that was probably the, the most suitable device to try and do this thing on. The rather basic box is effectively just a plank of 3mm hardboard with some of those knobs um, drilled into it and then lots of cables coming out and into the Arduino. And the idea of it is really that I've run out of knobs when I've got uh, when I've had the next delivery this will have six knobs on it. Um, and the therefore control three throttles. So each set of each column of two two knobs would be a throttle. The top one you twist around, and that will choose you which uh, train from the roster you want to drive. And once you decide on that, then this one goes forwards, slows down, and if you if the train is stopped, seeing as this has timed itself so well, if the train is stopped, these knobs have button presses. So if I press the button in while it's stopped. Oh, that didn't work very well, it kind of stopped. It won't let it do it, it doesn't stop. Let's have one more go, press it in. There we go. So, yeah, when the when the, the throttle's on zero, slow down to zero, press the button in, and I feel it'll go in the other direction. I think I've got, as far as I've got, just out of pure curiosity because I didn't know what I'd think of tactile control I'm, I'm used to having kind of the, the freedom of, of taking a tablet with me wherever I go in the loft and, and having control 
right next to me no, where, no matter where I am. I think that would be difficult with, with that thing. It would have to be battery powered and goodness knows what else, even if I could put it in a smarter box. So it was more curiosity, I think, that, that got me to this point. But I am actually quite enjoying the the, the tactile feel of it. These these buttons have um, they they kind of have little clicks as they as they move along. They've got I think they've got little lines on them, but they don't really mean anything because they're 360 degree um, turning. They they never stop. So which is quite useful because you have to factor in. I could turn this dial up to say 40 to get that train going but then another controller could take it down to 20 and I need to make sure if that happens that when I start dialing turning this dial again it starts from the 20 that the train's currently at not the the 40 that it was at when I last turned this Just a quick word then on, on how it all works. It is unfortunately <laughs> a lot of the things I do uh, hidden in a, a load of uh, messy code. But the, the, the principle of it, I guess, is the when the, the ESP32 starts up, it forms a TCP connection to this Wii Throttle server. It joins on the Wi-Fi network and then looks by IP address for this, this Wii Throttle server. And then it, once it connects, it identifies itself by name. It's kind of got a little name there. And, and that's it connected. We throttle responds to that connection by sending a list of all locos in the roster together with their um, DCC address and and the the, uh, the, I, well, yeah, the the name. It does do other stuff as well. Um, it sends because this is the thing that the, the engine driver app uses. It sends points and it sends routes and it sends consists and a few other things. But I, as far as those tactile controllers are concerned, I don't want to be changed. There's no need to be changing points, looking after points or routes on them. Screens are much better for that with, with buttons. I'm just concerned with, with, with the locos. So what the ESP32, once, once it receives this, this list of locos, it puts them in a, a usable um, array in memory. And then every time it detects that the, the top button on, on this, um, this box is turned it effectively selects the next loco in the array so you work your way one through by one by one which again is why a, uh, a screen would be useful here because as you turn it you're working through the roster and it tells you which which one you're on uh, once you uh, select a, 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 a loco from the roster you form what they call a, a multi-throttle um, a multi-throttle is essentially one throttle but that can control multiple locos at the same time in a kind of ad hoc consist format you can't control you all of the trains that all of locos that are on a multi-throttle will all get the same speed stop instruction you can't have different locos at different speeds on one multi-throttle so each of these little columns represents a multi-throttle there are therefore three multi-throttles on this ESP um, and when uh, local is selected this knob down here changes the speed and again the, the ESP detects the movement in the in the dial in the knob and it um, takes that as a speed step uh, increases the, the speed of the locomotive and sends that message back to JMRI through the the Wii throttle. There's a, a little bit of um, extra stuff in there as well. It has to handle direction changes. If I just bring this down here and try and get it facing the right way, I think I've slowed the train down. Something doing that. Um, you kind of need to to sync up. So, for example, is this uh, where is that transfer? I've heard it squeaking. I think it's around somewhere. Let's speed it up. So if I if I speed this this transfer I express up see that the, the result there it is it's it's instant on on that screen and that's what's actually happening there is I'm turning the dial the ESP32 is, is detecting that I turned the dial it's sending the new speed to we throttle and which goes into JMRI and then we throttle sends the update to that speed to all other multi throttles that have control of that train which happens to be to be this one here so I think I've got this set up. Say if I change the direction of the train here by pressing that, again this 
ESP32 needs to be able to receive the message. So again, that's gone the other way. That's sent a message. This train's now in reverse up into We Throttle and JMRI. That message has then been sent to all other subscribed devices, which is this one. So this needs to be able to receive that message, process that message, and then actually put the throttle in reverse so that next time I turn this knob, train goes backwards. I've had a little bit of a redesign and a rethink. Um, I gave it a good test and I felt like the there was a bit of a limitation because this, this layout's got three lines running around the top and it's got two lines running around the bottom. So at any time I could have five trains running. So it felt there was a bit of disparity where there was a, a box with at the time six dials on it, but they would only control three trains and I had to think about whether I could maximize the use of the dials because I've, I've, I've got bored of using the word knobs I'm onto dials now these dials across the top were seldom used because they were only used to 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 select a train and they would only be used one at a time I wouldn't be selecting two trains at, at the same time so I had a bit of a redesign and rethink and I thought actually all it needs really is one selector dial up here and when this dial turns when I turn it it will select and assign a train to whichever of these dials here are pressed down because they've got this 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 press down button so the idea now is if I want to assign a train to a particular control I hold it down and turn that and what that's given me here is six throttles instead of three I've rigged it all up with no track power at the minute then just to try and demonstrate it and I've got the um, here I've got the console debug console output messages from from the machine so at the minute it's just as it would start up it's connected to we throttle and it's not doing anything all the knobs in random positions but that doesn't matter so if this is my throttle one I'll hold it down and the um, the debug will detect that the button's held. If it's held for more than a second, it will uh, then allow me, if I turn this knob here, to scroll through all the available trains. And let's go for the class 47, wherever it is. Class 43, sorry, that's the one. Select that one. And it's connected now and it's had feedback also from JMRI through Wee Throttle to tell it what the speed and what the direction of that train should be just in case there's another throttle open and, and running it. And then I can go to, uh, I can say if this is my second throttle, I can hold this one down. And the same thing, it tells me that the button's been held and I can dial through and let's go for the Super Sprinter and assign that one. I think that one had one assigned, it had a train assigned already, so it's dropped it and it's assigned that one. I needed to put some some um, code in in the, the script to, to be able to differentiate. If I just press this button example, for example, it's got the class 43 on it, it's gonna detect that it wants to change direction and there it's, it's put it in reverse. And if I click it again, it puts it in forward, but it needs to differentiate that between if I hold this button down for more than a second there it detects that the, the button's been held and I can if I if I then don't move it and release it it will just release the the uh, the um, the class 43 that it had um, and, and leave the throttle unassigned I currently have the class 43 running around on this dial now then there it is down there and so I'm going to move it up to the top deck hopefully so first thing I need to do is set all these points. It's going to come around that way and that's clear. It's the only train running, so I don't need to worry about it. Then it's going to come around the incline, go in there. And I'm getting much better with double slips now. That's that one that needs set in. And let's be really adventurous and move it straight to the inside as well. So that should be all the points set for it to get onto this inside line here. So I'm going to try and control its speed now just with the dial as it comes around so I've also got this uh, debug stuff running here 
can see it's currently running at whatever it is, about 25. So I'm going to oh, slow it down. And again, just using this this dial. I I do like the the tactile feel of it. I have to admit. And I don't have to look at it as well. When I'm when I'm working with a tablet and I'm looking at the I'm controlling the speed on a tablet, I have to look at the screen so I know where I've set the, the thing to because there's nothing, again, nothing tactile. But with this thing I can just keep my as it goes down the back there, keep my finger on on this dial, and I don't have to be looking at it because I can feel what I'm doing. So as it comes up to join the upper deck here, if I've set the points right, just slow it down a little bit because it's going to go over a load of point work maybe give it a bit more speed now as it goes around the corner and then it's going to go and do the same all the way over there as long as there isn't a screwdriver left on the track or a bottle of solder there it goes, across it goes, and once it's down this side, I can give it a little bit of welly, but not too much, because I've got all these points to close here. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and if I'm being really sensible, the two on the bottom deck as well. But as it comes round now, here it is. I can start to really give it a bit of welly. Without looking at the dial. Now if I just start to slow this 43 down as it comes around the corner so I can get it to a, a stop I've actually put a stop button on on these as well so if I press that as it's coming by it'll it'll stop it I thought sometimes if I really need it stopped quickly uh, turning a dial for ages to get it to stop isn't a good idea so I've got a, um, a stop button on on these now so that they, they will stop instantly now I kind of rationalized in my head that this thing it really doesn't need to worry about points and, and um, uh, routes and all that kind of stuff because they're managed elsewhere by devices that are more suitable to the to the, the job. But the one thing I haven't thought about yet with, with this, if it's really going to be useful, are function buttons. Because although I very rarely use function buttons, I do quite like headlights. And therefore, if a train starts and it doesn't have its headlights on, I want a way of passing that function instruction to the train without having to resort to a tablet or to uh, to a, a Windows app. So I have an idea for adding functions to it. I think it'll work quite well. Um, it will. Th this is the maximum number of, of knobs I can get attached to the ESP now. So it will involve sacrificing one, I think. I think the idea is to move one of these up here to be a, a function select knob, the same as that's the, uh, the the assignment select. Reduce the number of throttles to five, which isn't too big a compromise. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned it already, I really need to put an LCD screen in here as well so that um, it, it's, it can be used without having to be attached to a, a, a debug output. But that's going to involve either taking this one completely apart or building a new one. So I think I'll, I'll stop for here while I work out what I'm going to do, which I guess means at some point there might be a part two.